I think taking large artistic risks is part of the job of a good director of any arts organisation. But if I think back to moments where I experienced that as a really acute and intense feeling of fear and, um, and even horror at the level of risk that we were taking as an organisation, it boils down to uh, an experience of watching a really marvellous artist, Kira O'Reilly, rolling very slowly down the stone stairs of the Whitworth Art Gallery. And it was part of a big project that we did in 2009 with the performance artist Marina Abramovich. Now, it was an amazing project to work on. She's an artist who I've admired um, my whole adult life. Throughout her career, she's taken extraordinary risks with her own body and with the environment that she operates in, with her artistic reputation. She made her name in the 70s by being absolutely on the far edge of um, the, the kind of risk an artist would be willing to take with their own body and their own, um, their own art. So when I was offered uh, the opportunity of working with her by Alex Poots, the director of the Manchester International Festival, I said straight away that the, the Whitworth, the whole organisation, would relish the opportunity. And what the project became was uh, um, a performance experiment uh, where 14 live artists were given the whole of the Whitworth Art Gallery. We took away all the art collections and gave the spaces to them to make new work that would respond to the building, that would uh, take their practice to a new level of creative and artistic experiment. And Kira devised a piece that was a nude descending a staircase, a kind of gorgeous relationship to the history of art and the way that women are represented. It was wonderful from the first moment that she uttered the idea myself and Marina and Alex said that that just sounds fantastic we've got to make this happen and the nude that was descending the staircase was herself um, and she was descending stairs that are not usually open to the public but a beautiful Edwardian staircases and all she did really was roll very very slowly down the stairs um, in a series of tumbles, choreographed movements that replicated what would have happened if she'd fallen at speed um, to her death at the bottom of the staircase. But it unfolded over four hours, and so bits of it were painfully slow to watch. And we were in the first performance of the, the whole work, um, it being live art rather than theatre, nothing had been rehearsed, Everything had been worked through very carefully and risk managed um, in the best way that we could. But Kira hadn't rolled down the staircase until the first time that she did it in front of the public. And I was sitting at the bottom of the stairs as she undertook a particularly difficult bit of movement. She was on her shoulders and she was lowering her legs down and her hands were twisted sideways around the, um, the banisters of the staircase and her legs were inching down to reach the, the next step down. And she didn't look like she was going to make it. And as she kind of tensed and then relaxed into the most difficult bit of the movement, she locked eyes with me. And as I looked and held her gaze, I thought, she's going to break her neck. She really is definitely going to break her neck. I don't see how she's going to get out of that movement safely. And in that moment, a kind of absolute rush of adrenaline and fear happened for me. And I felt physically sick. And I know I went as white as a sheet, but I knew I had to hold her gaze. And I was sitting there thinking, I really love Kira, she's a fantastic artist and a, had become a really dear friend of mine by that stage. And she's going to really injure herself and I am responsible for this. And I let this happen. And why on earth didn't I think that it would be dangerous to do this? And how on earth am I going to explain to the University of Manchester and the International Festival and everywhere that an artist died on my watch? But I still held her gaze. 
and after what felt like hours but was probably another two minutes she just shifted her weight ever so slightly sideways so that one foot did connect with the lower step and very gradually started to unravel and when she got to a, a definitely safer and more comfortable position I left and went to the ladies and then stood shaking in the toilets for a good 10 minutes thinking all of this actually is too much what were we thinking until I kind of recovered my sense of myself and remembered that actually there were method statements in place for every single one of these pieces and that many people more than me had looked at the issues each of the live art pieces raised and that Kira has some of the best yoga and um, core strength training of any person that I know and that actually she was scared in that moment but she knew she wasn't going to break her neck and all she needed was to kind of hold my gaze to keep her confidence and when she finished and we talked about the piece she just she walked right up to me and said that moment you know where you held my held my gaze just gave me the strength I needed. And what I learned from that was that in that case, I hadn't really let myself contemplate the level of risk that we were taking. Because I knew if I did in advance, it would be too scary. And that it was good that I hadn't really let myself go to a bad place of fear. Because actually, collectively, we shared the management of the risk. And so everybody had put in the right bit of attention so that it was safe to do something that was extraordinary. And that it taught me a really important lesson about how you need to be scared sometimes. Because out of that comes really magnificent art. <laughs>